a hero in the eyes of many unborn children and in heaven, David Delighton of the Center for Medical Progress, who uncovered how reportedly Planned Parenthood was aborting children and selling parts of the babies piece by piece. He says he has, he has over 300 hours of under, undercover investigative reports. I know this is sad, but check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. The question I asked was, and an early prophecy was, is America under judgment? Let's take a look. And there's three phases to it. You got, I mean, it's totally yours, a partnership for any amount, but you need to listen to this. You need to know because we are in some, some America is in trouble. Speaking of that, as we're removing the Ten Commandments, we just, the Congress, yours and our leaders that we sent to Washington, D.C., they um, fu are funded. They said against the will of the people, we will continue to fund plan Planned Parenthood with over 57 million abortions in the land. Do you remember? Actually, this is, uh, this is David uh, Delauden we're going to be talking about. David Delauden, he's the one, as you can see right here on your screen, he's the one that did the... Um, the um, the Center for Medical, he's the president of the Center for Medical Progress. He's the one that did the human capital uh, investigation videos, which y'all saw. I mean, you probably can see them on your screen right now. Be careful. Like, turn your kids away. You don't probably see this, but here's some pictures right here uh, to be able to, to see, remind you what we're talking about. This is one of the leaders that was there. You know, um, you just go back to, to, to camera two on this. And then um, you're looking at this is baby, babies that have been aborted in dishes. They're selling the parts. This is a closer look at that. Um, a little bit more they're talking about it. But you remember we showed these videos, we got these vid videos, they're talking about what you can get for each particular part, selling them individually. This is, uh, I believe the lady is saying that she can itemize it on a particular uh, baby part. This is one saying, no big deal, we can do this thing. I mean, this is horrific. Over 300 hours of investigative journalists was done by, as you're seeing right here, come bring back David, David Delighton again. David Delighton, he's a young man in his 20s. I believe it's for the last two years, he went under investigation with maybe six or seven, you'll hear more details about it, to be able to uncover what's going on, reportedly, allegedly, this is what they're alleging, this is what's going on. And he is the president for the Center of Medical Progress, uh, who did the video, said he called it human capital because they're selling our children, selling our babies, or 57 seven million children are boarded. So we have an interview, we finally got an interview with him as he's being interviewed by Glenn Beck on The Blaze. We want you to join it, take a look. And rarely do I see somebody who is as smart, as capable, uh, and as spot on mission and humble. Thank you, Glenn. As the guy, Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate that. As the guy who's the opposite of Stu. Oh. Thank uh, you. The guy I appreciate who it. Is, shut up, both I of you. I just thought it was. Uh, as uh, David Delighton, he is the guy who has made the Planned Parenthood videos. Um, that we have been watching now as a nation. I believe he was raised up for this purpose. Uh, and and David, welcome to the program. I I want to I want to tell you in person, you have changed me as a person. Your work has changed me. I think Pat would say the same thing. Definitely, we have always believed that abortion was wrong, mm -hmm. but we bought into this lie that we shouldn't say anything. There's other topics that are too, we're carrying enough water. This is what we used to say to each other. We're carrying mm. enough water. We can't carry any more water. When it's you're, too damaging. Yeah. When your videos came out, I said, St Stu said, Pat said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I don't care what the damage is. I don't care what happens. You changed us as people. And I thank you for that. Well, thank you for having me on, and that's a very, very high praise to, to hear. Um, when I asked you, because we've been trying to get you on for a while, um, when I asked you when you are standing on my stage yesterday, would you come on the radio show with me today? Um, you said something that I thought was really intriguing, that you have been, you've been taking a back seat and trying not to be in the press. Do you mind talking about this? No, 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 no we, we can talk okay. about it, yeah. Not wanting to be in the press, why? Well, um, 
I mean, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I'm certainly not, I wouldn't say that I'm shrinking from, you know, any, any opportunity or, sure. or any kind of duty there, but I, I just, I think it's, and, and I've said this before actually publicly, so I just say it again, that I, I, you know, I think it's really important to, um, to, uh, you know, to be clear that the story is, you know, it's, it's not about me at the end of the day. It's about Planned Parenthood. It's about the babies that they kill and part out like used cars. Um, and it's important to keep the focus on the actual revelations and the actual discoveries um, and, and not let anything distract from that. How many how, how many more of these do you have? Uh, you know, the, we we gathered a total of close to 300 hours of undercover footage in the two and a half years that we did this investigative journalism study. We've probably only released about 20 <laughs> of those 300 oh my. hours. Oh, not even so, a tenth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, uh, what, what, and have, have you have are, are there things that you are just like, I, I, I can't wait until this shoe drops i can't wait are there things that are still being held that you're like yeah yeah there's there's definitely still a still a couple of uh a couple of things like that that uh i'm quite excited to to bring forth um, how much restraint right. has it taken to a not make this about you um but b uh not to just run and rush this out pump all of it out, but to hold it as long as you have, to do it exactly right. How, I mean, how it does, what, was, what was the restraint like? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see it so much, I don't see like restraint so much as just wanting to put in the, the effort that, um, that us, that a topic like that deserves, um, to be done, to, to be done properly. Um, it's definitely, you know, it's not easy, you know, it, it would be easier to, um, I think just like it would be easier, to, you know, it would be easier to make one video rather than ten. For example, it would be easier to gather twelve hours than than three hundred hours. Um, but for a topic as big and multi layered and complex as baby parts harvesting and trafficking, um, that's something that deserved to have a long term, in depth, comprehensive investigative journalism study. Um, it deserved to have all of the pieces be in place um, and to have a complete narrative to take to the public before any individual piece was going to come out. Um, so, uh, so, you know, like you said, this, this was a very mission driven effort from the very beginning. Um, it was very cause driven and, uh, and I, you know, I, I wanted to do a, to do a really good job. So at, at any point, did you see, I mean, you were going up against literally evil had to be breathtaking there at, were there were there times? Are you in the videos? Are you one of them asking the questions? I, I was one of um, one of six actors. That okay, used, yeah, because you guys play the role very, very, very well. Um, at some point, you guys had to have walked out of those just shaking uh, and thinking, "A, I can't believe the evil that I just faced," and B, people die for stuff like this. I mean, we're going up against evil. And very powerful evil. Did that ever hit you while you were doing these things? Yeah, yeah, several times actually. Um, uh, you know, I remember one one experience in particular um, was uh, was a conversation that I had with a late term abortion doctor. Her name is Dr. Shelley Sella. She was featured in the uh, documentary After Tiller, which profiles several different late-term abortion doctors. She practices now in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where they have no abortion laws whatsoever. So she does abortions all the way up to up to birth, 39, 40 weeks. Oh my uh, God. She is a she works uh, part time. Where where is this? This is in in New Mexico, Albuquerque, New wow. Mexico, Southwestern Women's Options. Yeah. And uh, she also is a contract physician for Planned Parenthood in Northern California. And I went to a screening of the After Tiller documentary um, in the East Bay in California at Berkeley where she was, she was there to do a question and answer session after the film. And so I was there undercover um, as my character and I asked her a few questions about fetal tissue um, harvesting. And while I was speaking with her, um, she wasn't suspicious of my character. Everything, everything was, uh, everything was going well. Um, we were talking, kind of joking, laughing about something. And all of a sudden, uh, she looked straight in my eyes, and I saw almost like a flash of light run from one side of her eyes to the other, kind of like when the sun is flashing in a in a in a, in a car, like driving on the freeway. And it flashed from one side to the other, and all of a sudden her eyes looked really hard and mean and aggressive. And for the first time during this entire project, I, I felt really afraid, like, like an actual fear 
fight or flight kind of kind of response. Um, like I felt very exposed. Felt like she knew everything about me. Um, and uh, and and then all of a sudden the, that kind of flash, that glint in her eye was there again, and it was gone. Back to laughing, joking, totally casual, normal. Um, and uh, I, I talked about that with several people afterwards, and some people have kind of a spiritual interpretation of that event. Others a more psychological interpretation. But on some level, we feel like that was the predator. Um, the predator look or the predator instinct that you see in someone who is who is accustomed to killing people, um, and this is a late term abortion doctor who is you know who's terminated many 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 big mm. babies over the years, um, and that was that was probably full term babies, full term babies, yeah, and that was probably the most significant moment um, that that I had um, kind of early on encountering, as you said, the 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 evil that we were going to be directly in contact. What with. does it um, what is your life like now? I mean, I know when I was at Fox, but when I was at Fox, and now even with um, ISIS, um, ISIS is probably, I mean, we, you're dealing with, when I was at Fox, we were dealing with giant government and corrupt people, really bad, nasty, some of them evil, corrupt people. But generally speaking, not killers. Mm -hmm. um, ISIS, they're killers. I have lots of security. You don't. What is your life like now? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, my my life is, um, you know, I feel like in some ways not not too much has has changed since the uh, since the time that we were doing actually doing this project for two and a half years. The biggest change maybe is that um, in some ways it's a little easier. Frankly, it was it was a lot harder to um to have lunch or dinner with late-term abortion doctors <laughs> to spend weekends with them at <laughs> fancy hotels talking about new and better ways to kill children um that was that was a lot harder um than dealing with any of the media or media narrative stuff the current events all, all of that and you know that comes with the public release of the project is frankly a little easier um than than the actual uh execution of the undercover work um, the response overall has been way more positive than negative. Um, I've been involved in the public release of projects like this before, and uh, and the the level of hate mail, so to speak, that's that's come at us is actually an order of magnitude less than what I've seen in the past. And and I think that that is a function of how these videos are really striking a chord um, at the core of people's values, at the core of of just human and American values. Um, and uh, the response has been just overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive compared to negative. There have been a few, a few death threats, so, but, but just a few. Let me, uh, just a few. <laughs> um, let, me, um, let me ask you of three categories. Your feeling on, from what you expected and what has happened, what you've lived through, what you've seen, what you know, and now what, what the reaction is. Tell me your feeling on the public reaction, the institutional reaction, as far as Congress and the administration, and quite honestly, because he's he's still here in America, the Pope's reaction uh, and the opportunity that they had last week. Tell me about public servant Pope. Sure. So, um, so for the public reaction. Um, I would have to say, and, and this also goes for the public servant reaction. Um, you know, I always thought that, that these videos and the revelations about Planned Parenthood's baby parts harvesting would be really big news. Um, but I never thought or anticipated or expected it would be like 10 presidential candidates commenting on it in the first 24 hours big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's a level of volume and a level of interest that I don't think you can necessarily even plan for or anticipate for anything. Um, but, uh, but that has been, so in, in terms of the public reaction, the public outrage, um, and especially what I've really taken away from the public reaction is, is there seems to be a real motivation on the part of a lot of people to, to, to make sure that something changes yeah. because of these videos. Um, there's people, you know, STEM Express is one of the biotech companies that's been partnered um, most, most, uh, um, uh, most extensively with Planned Parenthood clinics around the country to harvest baby parts. And they're located in a small mountain town in Northern California. And there's local people there who've started doing prayer vigils and protests um, 
every every week outside of the outside of the STEM Express laboratory up in that in that town. Um, and we're just inspired to do that by the videos. And they're not giving up. And they have they have big you know big rallies every month about it. So um, so the public reaction I think has been um, has been even even beyond what I could have expected. The same thing goes for the for the um, the public servant reaction. Um, I'm I'm very gratified to see that there are four different congressional committees that are now investigating Planned Parenthood and their baby parts harvesting and late-term abortion business, um, as well as many, many state and local law enforcement investigations moving forward. Um, as far as the Holy Father's reaction, um, I am a huge fan of Pope Francis. He's a huge inspiration and role model to me. You Catholic? I am Catholic. He was especially um, an, an inspiration for, for me and a source of wisdom during the, during the course of doing this project for two and a half years. Um, I was a little disappointed by the fact that he didn't mention um, abortion or or baby parts trafficking in the in the speech to Congress um, a few days ago, especially because the Holy Father has very very strongly condemned um, harvesting mm -hmm. and trafficking mm -hmm. in aborted baby parts. Uh, just a little over a year ago, he mentioned it explicitly, and he's familiar with with the issue. Um, I feel like that probably has more to do with the with kind of the diplomatic core management of the papal visit um, as opposed to the Holy Father as a, as a person. But I do feel like it was a little bit of a missed opportunity because so many people love him and look up to him for the prophetic voice that he has and that he brings to the to the conversation and, and brings to you know to our lives. Um, and so I feel like that could have been his Mother Teresa moment, you know, yeah, speaking truth been. to power. It's exactly America. what we um, That's what and, we said. And, he and I feel like it was a missed opportunity. Yeah, um, we're talking to David Delighton. He is the founder of Center for Medical Progress, uh, um, Progress which sounds like a progressive uh, 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 front organization. Quite honestly, um, these are the good guys. These are the guys who have gone out and made these uh, anti-abortion uh, videos. These videos on Planned Parenthood. I want to talk to you a little bit about what Nancy Pelosi said, uh, where she would like an investigation of that. When we come back in just a second. Or this is an amazing man. We're listening to David Delighton, president of Center for Medical Progress, the one who did the human capital investigation of Planned Parenthood and the selling of uh, baby body parts and all that's going on that we've been talking about and showing these videos. At 26 years old, the last two years, he invested in doing this. It's an, it's an amazing person, amazing team. I believe he said six or eight people that had done this, over 300 hours of video. Uh, and, and what we try to do and encourage you at VFN that this is what we have to do. This is what we have to do. We have to begin to wake up and say, you know what, we can be embedded journalists. You know, we can join the internship program at uh, VFN TV. You can come in and join the internship so you could learn how to make these kind of videos that you can go out and do investigative reporting. Uh, if you're interested in joining the internship, you can go to vfntv.com and contact us in the contact area and we'll make contact with you. This is how you do it. Young people got together. They said, this is, a, this is a terrible thing. Let's go in and just make this thing happen. They learned how to act out these roles. They had their cameras and they went and did investigative journalism, which used to happen all the time, by the way, in America. But lately, it seems there's no journalist that's out doing this kind of investigative work. But right back to this interview that Glenn Beck is having with David Delighton. This is so important because David Delighton is the one that was responsible for putting this investigation together with the Center for Medical Progress to uncover, allegedly, what Planned Parenthood is doing in our nation with over 57 million children killed in the womb, aborted, and they're revealing how they were selling the body parts. Remember, we had those of these babies to universities and research labs, and this, this stem cell research company in Northern California. Well, this is the man right here being interviewed by Glenn Beck. Let's take a look. Welcome back to the program. We're talking to uh, David Delighton. He is the guy who is responsible for making, and I don't want to leave anybody out, but how many people on your team that made these videos? Uh, we worked with a handful of contractors, probably five to ten people total. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, um, these are the videos uh, that uh, have come out for um, uh, on Planned Parenthood to show exactly what they're doing. That is a death factory. Uh, and, a, um, and, and they're selling for spare parts. It's, it's sick what they're doing. I want to play a little bit of Nancy Pelosi here. Yeah, this is a, an amazing video, David. How do, you, how do you feel when you hear it? First of all, I'll, I'll play it for you and then... Uh, we'll ask you a question. No, I haven't seen. I've seen some news reports of it, but I also know uh, that some of it is not real and you can create any reality that you want. But e OK, so even if you don't mm. accept the, the, the videos on their, on their no, face. And I think they should be investigated as to how they obtained, the, obtained those and doctored those and then had them be Jeez. accepted as something that 
was an indictment against Planned Parenthood because that's not true. How does that make you feel when she hasn't even seen the video (laughs) and she's calling for an investigation of of not Planned Parenthood, but you? I would imagine you would welcome that investigation. Yeah. No, so I mean, I think three words, denial, projection, and contradiction. <laughs> Those yep. are the three words that sum up her approach there. They they mm. can't defend the conduct of Planned Parenthood on the videos, so they okay. have to resort to denialism, to saying that the videos aren't real and the stuff that they're showing isn't real. Um, they're, they're projecting in terms of, you know, the, the, uh, I just thought that line was so funny. You can create any reality that you want. <laughs> I feel like the the spin from Planned Parenthood and their allies in Congress and in the media, they're the ones who are creating an alternate reality where the videos aren't real and the events that they record are somehow fabricated. That's the mm-hmm. alternate reality that's being created. And number three, the mm-hmm. contradiction that, you know, if the videos aren't real, then why do they need an investigation into myself and CMP? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. so. It does seem like they are they're, they're going for it in that in that. They're trying to attack it because they know a certain percentage of people just won't check. They'll hear that they've been doctored, believe it, and move on, which is a, mm-hmm. a typical tactic. But it, from the the conservative approach to this, this has all been about defunding Planned Parenthood. And as I watch these videos, I can't help but feel like that is just small potatoes when it comes to this entire thing. I mean, I can't believe after seeing this action that that's what we're going to Is that Was that your end goal, just defend, defunding Planned Parenthood, or how much more was that? Hang on. We're going to get your answer when we come back. The organization responsible for the uh, videos that are exposing Planned Parenthood are done by the Center for Medical Progress. The guy who is the founder of that is David Delighton, and he is with us now. David, uh, you have you do this project for several years. I mean, this is you put a lot of work into this. So I would imagine as you're going through it, you're picturing the end game, what happens at the end of this. Um, and the conversation's been around defunding Planned Parenthood, which is essentially we don't we no longer pay for these activities, which would be great. I'd really like to not be paying for them. However, they're still in operation. They still exist at that front. Their 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 activities seemingly go on potentially at other institutions. Is defunding Planned Parenthood enough? Uh, no, <laughs> it's definitely not. And, you know, I think what the American people want when they're confronted with evidence like this, that an organization that is funded by half a billion taxpayer dollars a year and holds themselves out as a as a legitimate mainstream medical organization where they're confronted with evidence that uh, that an organization like that has been um, has been lying to them and has been using their taxpayer money to run a horrific late term abortion and baby parts business. Um, I think the American people want accountability more than anything else. And what that means is it means not just defunding and making sure that taxpayer money is not going to fund the biggest abortion business in the country that is going beyond abortion to do even more grotesque, um, horrific activities. Um, But it also means making sure that they're held accountable to the law, to the whole constellation of laws and regulations on both the state and federal level that are violated um, in the course of harvesting and selling aborted baby parts. Um, so, you know, I think it's good that there's four different congressional investigations that are moving forward right now. There's multiple state, um, and local law enforcement criminal investigations that are moving forward right now of, of Planned Parenthood, um, and defunding is only one, one part of holding them accountable. Do you find it, because going through this has been amazing in that it really has, as Glenn and, and Pat both said, you really like change perspective, I think, with this project. It's, it's, it's done an amazing thing. But in some strange way, it's almost as if people are more upset about the sale mm-hmm. of the parts than they are the actual act of the murder. Have you seen that reflected at all? And is that is that a weird place to be as you're if you're moving through the sort of public out roll roll out of these uh, videos? Yeah, I um I I don't think that there's so much of a distinction between those two reactions. I think that when people are upset about Planned Parenthood selling baby parts, I think it's because um, it's because the transaction um, makes it really clear to them what's going on in that entire um, in that entire area of Planned Parenthood and abortion. And and part of you know why I thought this project was so important to do and to do in a really comprehensive and sophisticated way is that there is this paradox at the heart of baby parts trafficking. And it's that on the one hand, the human fetus, unborn children are, uh, are not considered to be fully human enough to be protected by, by mm-hmm. our laws. Their, their humanity is not considered to be fully equal 
to that of our own in order to be fully protected from being killed by abortion. But at the same time, it's precisely that equal humanity that makes them so valuable for, for exploitation, for, for um, scientific experimentation. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.